Ukraine will become a big Israel with its own face, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky declared this past Tuesday. Uh, according to Haaretz, this statement indicates that his country intends to emulate the Israeli security state as a consequence of the Russian invasion. Zelensky said such measures would not undercut Ukrainian democracy and, quote, an authoritarian state is impossible in Ukraine. Host of the Katie Halper Show and co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast, Katie Halper, joins us now to discuss. Welcome, Katie. Thanks for having me. And so what is he suggesting that Russian speakers would be second class citizen and like what what is like what parts right. of the Israeli system is he talking about emulating? Right. right. Hopefully not in an apartheid state. Hopefully an apartheid state would not be part of that. Um, but uh, who I mean, I want to be like Israel, I guess, in some ways, like I would love to get unlimited aid and be totally enabled by the United States to do whatever I wanted. But I do think that, you know, what's interesting about his response is that he uh, he he said that this was going to be if you read his statement, he talks about uh, having uh, military in all institutions, supermarkets, cinemas, there will be people with weapons. And yeah. what's interesting about it is that, you know, you you can understand why he would say we have to have a military, but it's weird that he's creating this kind of uber weaponized culture or that's what he's he's forecasting that he's going to create. I think he's probably signaling to uh, an American audience and Israeli audience, probably also the right wing population in um, Ukraine, uh, which he has to mollify. So it is a kind of weird way to frame it. Again, imagining people walking around with weapons in supermarkets and cinemas, which uh, I guess you can do here in the United States in open carry state, but. Yeah, I, I yeah, wouldn't my, be too yeah. spooked if people just having weapons, but what I suspect he, he means is, is perhaps the, right, the compulsory military service aspect of it, which is not uh, aspect that oh. like, Israel has that, right? And I, I is not something I would want here or in any nation, uh, frankly. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's interesting because he's overtly saying it's not going to be a kind of liberal democracy that they see in Europe. And he's, uh, he said in his statement that it's not going to be Switzerland, it's going to be Israel. So he's obviously doesn't want uh, neutrality. And I think, you know, if you think of the optics of this, Israel is it works for many levels because it also is, you know, the, the, the Israel likes to present itself as this plucky underdog and kind of a David and Goliath story. Now, I don't know if, if Zelensky also plans to, to settle areas or, you know, construct illegal se settlements or colonize anyone. I'm hoping that that's not part of his vision, his well, vision well, board. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> Ukraine's also been frustrated with Israel because Israel has, you know, pretty much maintained fairly warm relations with Russia throughout this and has right. re refused to send, you know, they, you know, the U.S. requested that they send the Iron Dome to Ukraine and Israel said, nah, I think we'll probably just not not do that. Yes. And so I wonder right. if he's tweaking Israel a little bit because Israel's kind of number one talking point is that, you know, how dare you criticize the only democracy in in the Middle East, which they always leave out Lebanon, which has lots of elections and is a democracy. Right. Tunisia. Uh, and they leave, <laughs> leave out. They're the, they're, they're the quote, quote unquote, the only, uh, the only democracy in the Middle East. No, nothing can undermine that claim. And so do you think he's sort of subtly saying, you're not actually a democracy. Well, Switzerland's a democracy. We're going to be more like you. Yeah, that's interesting. That's kind of, I don't know. If he, I feel like that suggests that he's more critical of Israel than he actually is, or more pro-democracy than he actually is. But yeah, I do think he's trying to, to present, you know, obviously he's Jewish and, and you know, uh, Israel is, uh, would support, you know, I think, in, at least in theory, right, they're supportive of a Jewish president. Um, and there's, you know, he, he, he gave some interesting speeches where he was trying to, as we know, a lot of people are, are comparing this situation kind of to World War II. They're trying to suggest that right. Putin is this Hitlerian figure. So I think there's also a lot of that kind of throwing back to uh, World War II, the Holocaust. He he said some interesting things to the German parliament about that, kind of suggesting that, you know, they had to support Ukraine to, to make up for the Holocaust and World War II. 
Yeah, I think he's just saying stuff to get sympathy. I mean, it, none, his his analogy doesn't even make logical sense at all. Um, you know, it, it's kind of does he believe that you know to compare Ukraine to Israel? Does he believe that the Ukrainians would be the Israelis or the Palestinians? That's my first question on that because if he thinks he's the Israeli side of it then they are, they're the ones in power. They're the ones in charge. So they're the ones that actually have the military that is at the checkpoints, that is in the theaters. They're the ones with the militarized, uh, you know, that have militarized. But in that seems odd to me because it seems like Russia would actually be the ones that would be uh, more in charge, like they would maybe occupy. And, and that to me seemed like it made more sense to say, well, we're gonna be occupied um, and the you, Russians are going to be here and they're going to be checking us and they're going to be militarizing our country and we're not going to have. You know, so to me, it was like the, the strangest. Clearly, he was just saying it, like you said, um, to get sympathy. There was really no actual parallel. But the problem is, is that I'm sure there's a bunch of Israelis sitting there thinking like, well, which <laughs> is he? Does he think he's in like the Israel? Would the Ukrainians be the Israelis or the Palestinians in this? And in in my view, they would be the Palestinians um, because their land would be taken, right? So there there would be an encroachment of the Russians coming into Ukraine, um, right. taking more and more land, right? So it seems like they would be more parallel to the Ukraine to the Palestinians. What's interesting though is that in Israel, the Palestinians actually support Russia. They're more sympathetic to Russia and the in the Israelis, you know, tend to when they poll people the the Israelis tend to be more sympathetic to the Ukrainians. So I thought that was also interesting as right. well. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, historically and currently, obviously, you, the United States, Russia is kind of will check the United States when it comes to or try to check the United States or, or counterbalance the United States when it comes to Israel. Because, of course, right. the United States is this unwavering, as, as every politician in the United States will remind people, uh, bipartisan consensus around this, you know, Israel and the United States have a special relationship. Yeah. yeah do so, you think he, I mean, do you think he means that uh, Ukraine is going to be kind of a client state of the United States? Or well, that's an, another right. subsidies that's another, and like he's, it's a lobbying play? Isn't it already? Yeah. Right, like well, he could not, be offering not to the to be, extent you know, of Israel. So maybe he wants like to get bumped up in the. Oh boy! Right. Well, Egypt, Egypt is going to have something to say about that, won't they? <laughs> Since they're number two well, on right. the I mean, funding list. Yeah, the idea of them being kind of like what Israel is is this stronghold, right? You can imagine them being a stronghold, right? A Western like outpost, kind of 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 you know, as you as you said, uh, Ryan, they like to present themselves as the only democracy in a sea of like barbarism. Although that's Which, clearly not true, because didn't we bring democracy to Iraq? I thought we did that. Oh, you're right. That's the other place that has democracy yeah. in, in the middle <laughs> place. Yeah, thanks to us. But um, I do think that's another point that he's making, and I think he's trying to kind of ding to both the United States, signal to the United States and Israel that he could be an effective ally. He's also trying, obviously, signaling that he's not going to back down and he's not going to be, you know, let be neutral like Switzerland. And you kind of can't have like the. the Israel is like the perfect counter uh, example to Switzerland, you know, what, whereas Switzerland is neutral, Israel is incredibly militarized and has, uh, you know, a military culture that imbues all aspects of society, with, starting with, um, you know, conscript, conscription for everyone, uh, with some the exceptions. Swiss, the Swiss do too. I mean, actually, they're, that's one of the reasons why they're not in the EU is because they didn't want to give up their guns. They all have guns. They're all conscripted, and at least the males. I, the Plus females might be. Uh, no, not <laughs> <Switzerland>. <laughs> oh, Funny, Ryan. Yeah, the, I, I, I don't know if women are also conscripted in Switzerland, but I know the men are. And they even have, you know, automatic, as long as they're in the military, they carry automatic weapons into their own homes. Uh, of course, the ammunition has to be stored in a different location, but it's a heavily armed country. They, but I mean, they, and you'll see kids riding around on bikes with their guns on their back. Like it's fairly normal in Switzerland. But so I, you know, it, but don't you think that this is kind of a, like you mentioned, I, I suppose you've already answered this question, but sort of a slap in the face to Israel. It's like a backhanded compliment or something. I'm not really sure what it is, right? <laughs> well, I like, think it is if, uh, if, if democracy is the, is the, the gold standard. But I think that for Zelensky, I don't think he sees it that way necessarily. And it's an awkward thing to say, because obviously that's what everyone's talking about in this conflict. And that's what everyone always signals towards. 
um, especially, you know, Western powers, whenever, like, like Ryan referred to, right? We went to Iraq, we invaded Iraq, we destabilized it to bring them democracy. So I do think it's interesting because we're seeing kind of like a couple of clashes in terms of ideology, uh, because Israel, of course, which likes to, as we said, presents itself as this unique democracy in the Middle East. Also, they don't say, what's interesting is that they don't say this part out loud, right? I think they probably don't appreciate being compared to not totally a democracy since that's so right. much their shit, if you will. But I don't know, honestly, if Zelensky uh, realizes that or not, because I do think he's trying to cozy up to Israel. So well, well, maybe he's just trying to get them excited. A democracy where millions of people have no rights. But, yeah. Yeah, we, we got to leave it there. Um, Katie, thank, thanks so much so for joining they, us. Go today, Israel. Yeah. yeah. And we'll have more Rising right after this.